Today was to be our last window of fine weather before high winds and snow were due to hit later that night for the next two days. Man, this is quite good at retaining the heat inside the unit. <laughs> Must not have been our prints from last night. And tonight, gusts of up to 140 kilometres an hour were expected in the exposed alpine environment. And so, we were eager to clamber back down through the north facing ledges and try our hands again at glassing for Samba one last time before eventually retreating to an alternative and more sheltered location in the afternoon. What I'm doing in this steep terrain is sidling and kicking my feet into the slope. And by doing that, you're effectively minimising your chances of sliding downhill, which can be very dangerous if you pick up speed. You only need to start to pick up a bit of speed initially, and if you don't stop, that's going to be very dangerous. The months and months of hard physical training and pre-trip preparation was paying off for Andre and I as we put kilometres under our feet through amazingly interesting and diverse terrain. And we eagerly anticipated a Samba encounter at almost every ledge, nook and cranny that we came upon. As a hunter, it's the unknown of what's around the next corner that continues to drive us to keep exploring. A feeling that keeps our spirits high and our senses acutely alert. A few game trails up through here haven't been used recently, but you can see the old trail where they've walked into the hill, sidling in and through these. Ledgy faces. It's just sort of ledge stage after ledge stage. And oh, a little bit of blackberry there. You can see why they'd like these ledges if it's windy. You'd just be able to tuck out of the wind, have your nice view, get your thermals, pop down to food, sidle into cover, and kind of, I've kind of got all that they need up here, oh bugger, all that they get caught on this log. I saw a little native mouse or something tried to get footage of it as it was hopping around on a ledge. Very cute. It can be those small things in life, like watching a native mouse sunning itself on a rock ledge deep in Victoria's Alpine National Park that makes you realise just how lucky we are to have access to such a remote and wild country. Something that Andre and I do not take for granted. I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge that I've been showing old stag sign in previous hunting films unknowingly. Fresh rubs should present with a green tinge rather than that reddy colour. But if it gives it a proper touch up, then it will um, yeah, come through as a, as a greeny colour. So I just want to openly acknowledge that you learn things each and every time. And I'd assumed it was similar to New Zealand where you've got like a rata that's quite a ready stain timber and that rubs up quite nice and red. Anyway, you live and learn. Andre and I have 
moved into uh, almost the out of snow zone and so we're glassing across into a whole lot of um, sort of broken bush country that's in the sun and it's out of the wind and we're on a prominent spur here leading down to the river and over here is a very open face so it's not a bad spot and it's amazing you open up so much more country on this angle than when we were up high looking down all the stuff that's underneath these ledges was obscured and now it's a in plain view down there but it's uh, very broken kind of country we do not want to pick pick up animals and that at this time of the day but you never know I think they'd be bedded down pretty yeah. pretty still yeah. Shivers, man, it's gonna hit the tree! Oh, sh As the afternoon sun wore on, the winds picked up as expected, and it was time for a change in tactics to drop into new country out of the wind. Well, at least everything will be dry, hopefully. I'll just, if I had enough, I'm just going to hit that button. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. You should only use your inreach SOS function in emergency situations only. Well, the sun's going down now. So, and we've still got quite a way to go. I'm going to find where there's a little bit of a track. And as we make our descent, the winds continue to gust above us from the west and northerly directions. So I'd say we'll have another 
been not up to half an hour of light and I really hope we find the little track so you know, get a little bit anxious when you start to get into remote country and you haven't quite made your destination or you haven't quite made your waypoint or the road or the track or whatever it might be and then you start to get a bit not panicky but then you start to second guess and doubt you don't want to do that you want to try and keep a little head and be prepared for the worst and hoping for the best a dog print yeah here's a dog print One. The battery's about to die. The decision to uproot from the harsh alpine conditions and shift camp to lower ground, tucked out of the way of high winds, is a sound decision that will set us up in good stead for the coming days ahead. So join us on day four where we totally change tactics, bush stalking through a mixture of montane, damp forest, dry woodland and grassy woodland canopy types.